Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, lax rats alike, welcome back to the Crease Dive. Today is February 10th, and if you're a freshman who just got done playing your first game of college across in your career and you didn't score seven goals and add another five assists in that game, you are a bust. I'm Jordy, and with me, as always, we've got Dukes in the lab. Dukes. Uh, a great week zero of the college across season. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of chatter on the interwebs, if you will. So, how how are you feeling this week? Isn't it awesome that Twitter's free? Like, just like you guys out there that just spew. Like, people make fun of me for my takes. It's it's great. Lacrosse Twitter makes me like not look as dumb as I actually am. So, shout out to you guys on Lax Twitter just spewing nonsense online all weekend long. But yeah, week zero lacrosse. It's kind of like, are you a college football guy at all? Yeah, big big college football guy. Uh, so like, it's like week zero. You know, we're, we're, you, yeah. you, got, you got Northwestern and Nebraska playing overseas in Dublin, and Nebraska, it, it, the quarterback Casey Thompson looked like a Heisman winner. And it's week zero, so you get a little taste of the college football. So you like your blood starts boiling. You're like college football's back, baby. That's what it felt like this weekend. You get like overreactions, underreactions. Um, everyone's just excited to have the game back, but, um, yeah, I, I'm just happy that college lax is back and I'm ha- happy that the nonsense on Twitter is back. Yeah. I, another thing though, like the, the week zero in college football, where it is still like a little bit weird to talk about this just because some teams haven't started, like we're still weeks away from the Ivies getting mm-hmm. their, their game started. Uh, a couple other teams that are, you know, like top 10, top 20 teams, like haven't gotten a chance to play yet. So it's like all this shit's going, like people have been like pent up, like lacrosse fans have been pent up for months, right? Like if you're a PLL fan, like you've been pent up since the middle of September. If you're strictly a college lacrosse fan, like you've been pent up since last Memorial Day. So like everyone's like so anxious for the season that this first week comes along like all all those things happen people have so much shit to say about everything that happened and it's like dude like 70 percent of the teams might have had a game this weekend but like there's still like a huge chunk that we haven't even seen yet and the amount that we have seen is like 60 minutes of all these teams and you're gonna have people who are like yep i already have my final four locked in yeah, and you have a bunch of teams like like if you looked at like the rankings, I think for like the media, it's like did not play. It was like okay, seventy percent of D one teams might have played this weekend, but like seventy percent of the teams that are ranked in the top twenty, according to our inside lacrosse media experts, like they're not like I don't know. It's weird. It was, it's definitely weird. I definitely understand that point of view. Yeah, um, I mean, but dude, the the teams that did play though, I'll I'll be honest, like I. Don't... It wasn't like it wasn't like we saw like the greatest lacrosse of all time this past weekend, but I didn't really think that it felt like like it, it felt like we were kind of in the mix of things. Like it, I, I thought that we were seeing some pretty decent lacrosse. Um, all right, like all, all the games that I was watching, the broadcasts were all pretty solid. Uh, I, I know that the actually no Hopkins and Jacksonville had a had a few technical difficulties, made a lot of people feel like they were tripping on acid, um, but. Yeah, I don't know. It, it felt great to get back in the swing of things, and I'm sure for uh, for a lot of these teams, it probably felt good to get going. Um, some other teams, they probably wish that they still had a few more weeks of practice because uh, it was it was a tough showing for some of the boys out there. Uh, trying to think about you know where where we want to start. Uh, we're recording this on Wednesday, so this is pretty much like right after. Let, let's just start with Duke right away. Uh, cool. because this is right after Duke just laid a beat down on high point on Tuesday night, uh, a game that, you know, Dyson Williams had six goals in the first half. Uh, so I'm pretty sure Dyson Williams could have almost beat the entire high point team himself. Uh, so this game was just full blown shellacking. And then they got their season started last Saturday, uh, with a shellacking over Bellarmine, not one that was like, I don't think anyone ever thought the Bellarmine could win that, but there is the February Duke aspect where people were like, eh, maybe it's, maybe it's going to be close. Like maybe Bellarmine can make a little bit of a game out of this and then Duke will turn it on in the fourth quarter. No, that was just a, a, a beat down from start to finish. So uh, Duke a year removed from not making the NCAA tournament. It looks like they're playing some pissed off ball to start the year. Last year, Duke felt like they were being the hunted. And, you know, everyone wanted to come attack. Now they're playing like they're the hunters. Like, they have a mission. And I know it's like, 
Well, you guys are just talking about overreactions. Week zero, like they played fucking Bellarmine and High Point. But if we look back, like you said, to the past Duke teams, they even when they win these close games in February, it's not like they're demolishing and they're not like imposing their will on these teams. Brennan O'Neill, now a junior, showing that he's the upperclassman, showing that he's the leader, showing that he is not a bust. I will say that on the record. Brennan O'Neill, not a bust. All right? Like, not a bust. Do you think he's a credit, bust? Credit, credit yeah. to the Creaseside podcast. We are officially the first lacrosse podcast to come out and definitive, definitively claim that Brennan O'Neill is not a bust. Yeah, and, you know, for the past two – like, you, you might think that he is a bust because he was the fastest player in Duke history to score 100 goals. Um, you know, might think he's a bust because he was the number one recruit. Might think he's a bust because he was, like, a, fr- like a freshman and sophomore that put up basically 50 goals in two seasons. But – yeah, I'm, I'm definitively saying Brennan O'Neill not a bust. Dyson Williams, they were trying to figure out how to get him into the lineups the past couple of years, how they would use him out of the midfield, out of the box, um, down low, especially when, like, Sowers came back and all this shit. All right, Sowers transferred all the shit. So Duke just looks like they are I, – I know what I'm saying. I hate the fucking overreactions, but Jordan, God damn it. If I had two teams to pick to win the national championship, I'm going Duke and Notre Dame. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's it's for sure. It's a um, it's a large reaction. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's an overreaction. I think that what we saw from Duke this weekend is something that we can expect the whole year. It's a large reaction in in the first week to be like, but it's it's not like saying like, oh, um, just like looking looking around here, like, all right, so Marquette beat the shit out of Lindenwood. They ruined Lindenwood's first D one game, seventeen to two. An overreaction would be like. Yep, Marquette's winning the national championship. Like, it's like, like Duke. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm I'm a, I'm a huge uh, yeah, what, what yeah. It, the, the Eagles, right? Yeah, Golden Eagles. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge Golden Eagles guy. Um, but it's it's like it's Duke. So like saying that they're gonna get the championship weekend isn't really an overreact. Like in most cases, that's like a yeah, no shit. It's just the fact that they didn't make the tournament last year. Yeah, I just feel like they were like. I know it's so weird to say, and I think I said this last week, but like it almost seems like Duke was slept on coming into the year. Like they weren't in that conversation with Georgetown, Maryland, Virginia. Nobody really, or even Notre Dame. People had to hype about Notre Dame because a lot of people didn't think they got screwed. But Duke is a talented, talent. like McAdory, what he's doing this year, he looks way better, um, more comfortable. So I, I just think that Duke just looks like a different, different breed right now. And let me just say this. Mike Adler was a great goalie for Duke. St. Joe's All-American, great goalie. Oh, he, he, he won a fight against a shark. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's that that might be his biggest dub in his career because, Will, this is such a funny name. I can't I, – the Duke goalie's name is Wilhelm. Wilhelm. Like the German name Wilhelm, but that's not it. Like Will, uh, yeah. William yeah. Helm. So yeah. I, I, that's just something I like. And, you know, I I wouldn't like the best with the Wilhelm. He looks like a, he's a D3 transfer from St. Louis. Looks like a very consistent goalie. I'm um, pretty sure he's an All-American for uh, at St. Lawrence. So, look, I think that with Naso at the X, Wilhelm in goal, and then with the, that trio of McAdory, O'Neal, and Dyson Williams are going to be doing all year. And even fucking like Aiden Denanza. I mean, just when I think about Duke, I'm like, my mind starts to spin. They are mind-numbingly good. And it just pisses me off that people slept on them coming into the year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean uh, – I got a hot take. I got a hot take. Sorry, Jordan. I got oh. I got a hot take. I think that if we're going – I'll say this right now. Should I say it for my overreaction? I, I want it right now. I'm fiending for it. I think this is going to go down as one of the best teams of all time. <sighs> like we're going to look back at this team and these players are going to be in the PLL and shit. And we're like, how the hell was all this talent on one roster? So are we talking about like the kind of the same thing that we did last year with Maryland where they go undefeated and then we say this is – like are you saying that this is the best team all time? They're going undefeated and running the table or are you saying the best collection of talent that we're going to see in the pro – like like kind of like you go back and you look at like that draft uh, – like what yeah. was the year like, like J.J. Watt got drafted, like that whole – Yeah, uh, the, the, the top like 11 where it's like oh, – Yeah, like, and, and, you're, yeah and you're just like that – that was – so like looking back on this Duke team and seeing top three picks all over the place. So I think that the thing that 
I need people to understand right now with Duke is that we can all agree that the ACC is better than the Big Ten. I, if you don't agree with that, I necessarily won't respect you as a human being or listen to any of your opinions. The ACC is the, like, so Duke could drop two to Notre Dame and Virginia and still win the championship. They still make the final four. Maryland, like, yeah, they won the games they were supposed to win last year. But when you, they played Notre Dame, they won by what, one or two? Then they go to the a soft where their second best, the second best team in the conference is Rutgers, who you beat by like eight both times you play. And then you get to the championship yeah, I mean, game. I mean, Rutgers, Rutgers, but they were a final four team. Don't sleep on Rutgers. I've said this my I, entire I, life. Don't I, sleep on Rutgers. As I, as as the number one Rutgers guy on the internet, how dare you discredit the Rutgers Scarlet Knights lacrosse program? They are just a stalwart wagon year in and year out. The Italian Stallions. And, you know, like, do you know, but uh, like if Duke I, this year, if Duke was in the, my I, point I, being, I know what if you're Duke saying. Was in the big, yeah. If Duke was in the Big Ten, I'd be way more comfortable being like, they will run the table. They could go undefeated. I'd be more, way more harping up that they could, they could run the table. That's probably not going to happen. And people will still be like, well, Maryland was better last year. And to that, I just won't get in that argument because it's not one that I can defend. It's a good point. Um, Watch Duke I, I, have the worst season of their life now. I just watched yeah. the fuck out of Duke. Well, they've got they've got what they got Jacksonville coming up this week. So, uh oh. Uh, speaking of Jacksonville, so yeah, Jacksonville. I feel bad for the Dolphins right now because I feel like they're going to be suffering the same fate that High Point was dealing with over the last few years, where you rattle off a couple big wins and now all of a sudden everyone expects you to just be a, a giant killer year after year. Uh, so, you know, high point, they had that year where they, they take down Virginia and Duke in one February and everyone's like, yeah, like high points, like the next great program in college across turns out that they were just Asher Nolting and like realistically weren't like they're a perfectly fine mid major team, but they're not making the tournament and shit like that. Jacksonville last year, I mean, they, they take down Duke. They uh, didn't, they beat Hopkins last year, right? Yeah. Or, or did they? No, they beat, they beat Hopkins last year. Okay. Yeah. But so, you, I mean, you rack up those wins last year, and now all of a sudden the expectations are going to be there where, you know, you're going to go into these games and people are going to expect you to take down the, the blue blood. Blue. Wow. Blue. Blue blood. blood. And they've lost to Hopkins. And then, and then you lose the Hopkins and then people are like, well, you know, maybe, maybe Jacksonville are frauds when in reality, it's like, no, like they just like got some good wins last year. Like they might not be supposed to be winning these games this year. Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe it's an over, maybe it's, I'm looking for underreaction on really on both fronts here. I don't know if Jacksonville, if, if you can put a fraud alert on them just because they lost to, uh, Hopkins, and then at the same time, is Hopkins back? I think that that might be a little bit of re- overreaction as well. Correction, they lost to Hopkins first game of the year last year, uh, then beat Duke, then beat like Denver. So that's right, when right, yep, like yep, legit. yep, there you go. So, uh, oh. hey, so they lost to Hopkins last year, and then they rattled off a couple huge wins. So who's to say that they can't do that same exact thing this year? And yeah. they were without Max Waldbaum in, in this game against Hopkins. So that's that's losing a big piece of their offense. I don't think you want to put the fraud fraud label on Jacksonville just yet. Um, I think that especially when you have – when you're a mid-major team that you don't get the top recruits, you don't have expectations right away. Like obviously with the transfer portal, that might change things. But I think the transfer portal got them a lot more talent last year than it kind of did this year. Um, yeah, I mean, you bring in Dylan Watson, which is a good move. But yeah, like, but even uh, he didn't have a great game. And, you right. know, you, again, you're coming back to this. You got mid-major talent. That, that's like there's no disrespect to Jacksonville. You can do a lot with mid-major talent. Hopkins probably recruits a different type of talent, which is just Baltimore, Baltimore kids and just like probably a higher pedigree. I, I think that if you're looking at a high school recruit and you said, do you want to go to Jacksonville or do you want to go to Hopkins? I think a lot of top high school recruits would rather go to Hopkins. And I know that we were talking last week's touching on it that like maybe eventually that'll go away, but I still think that Hopkins probably out recruits Jacksonville at the moment. Right. 
I, I would venture to guess that there are way more uh, boys Latin shorts at, yes. at Baltimore, so, at, at Hopkins, than you'll find in Jacksonville. So going off that, if you're going into this season and you got weeks to prepare for this game, you think that the boys Latin boy uh, guys are who are like now like hungry, being like we're being disrespected. People think that Hopkins isn't back. They're going to go to the mid major that gets all this respect. Everybody's sucking their dick for the past year and a half. And they're going to want to show them like who's still the top dog in college cross. So I think it's again that like the hunter versus the hunted. Jacksonville is now the hunted. People are going to go into that game with expectations. You, you like it's part of the thing. Like when you win it, win a couple of games. When you have when you start getting a little bit of media attention. When you got Twitter on your back. Yeah, that's that's cool and all. You get like all the credit credibility. But now you got to be ready to get punched in the face. Yeah, and I think that this this upcoming week. So I, I did see like a little bit of chatter about Hopkins is back after after a win against Jacksonville um, last week. And to be fair, it was a pretty definitive win, you know, five goal win. Uh, but I, I do think that this coming weekend is going to be a much better uh, litmus test, if you will, to see if Hopkins is indeed back or not. You play against Georgetown this weekend. You keep that one close. Maybe you, you lose, you know, you. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. You what cover the that hypothetical I, ten and a half goal spread. Is it? I'm, I'm trying to. I'm I gotta. What, what 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 would the hypothetical spread on that one be? I'm looking here. I don't think it would be up, but I would guess. Six so the uh, so uh, hypothetically speaking, if if there were to be any like that had a number on this, yeah, six and a half. I think. Did I get that? Yeah. See, this is why this is why when people say like, "Oh, dudes, you're so dumb. Oh, what a fucking moron, Jordy. How do you talk to that more? Big brain over here. Big yeah. brain. Look at the big brain on Dukes. Uh, but yeah, so a six and a half line. Like, I think you need to really cover that though for Hopkins to be back. I think like if you lose by six to Georgetown, like shut the fuck up. You guys aren't back, and you never will be. If you keep it to within three, then then you're you're allowed to be we can have the alert on is Hopkins back. If you win, Hopkins is back. It's just a little pathetic, don't you think? To say the whole hop is back thing. It, it's almost like if, you know, Tulane had a good year in college football this year. I hate to bring up college football. Tulane had a great year in college football, beat USC, right? <clears throat> it's almost like if Alabama beat Tulane next year, and, or te- Texas beats the Tulane, and Texas is like, we're back. We're back. Like, but doesn't doesn't Texas do that though? Yeah. So yeah, it depends on it depends on no, how like, you feel about Texas football. It's like if if you think that Texas football is embarrassing, and you know you, you think that every year that the, actually it's more Texas like Tennessee. Football, John, I think Texas football and Johns Hopkins might be more similar. Who would you give Johns Hopkins their? Who, who do you think their college football team is? No, I, I think that Texas is a, is a good, where you had just years of dominance where you own the sport. Um, and then like, like their Sam Ellinger would be like, Joel maybe Tanner. like what I, I was going to give him at least well Stanwick, <laughs> but, but I mean, well, Wells, he took him though to the, to the final four, no, four. Yeah, 2015, a, so, yeah. and Sam Ellinger won a, won a bowl game. So yeah, I, th- I think that that's, I think that that's fair. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't necessarily it's going to take a little bit longer for them to be like a Tennessee in my mind. They start for going, sure. they start going a few more years of just being dog shit. And then they like pick up one win against Loyola. And then they're like, Oh yeah, it feels like, feels like Oh nine. <laughs> then, <laughs> then, then I'll start calling them to 10. But I do think that, yeah, I think you're right. We, I'd have to, we can definitely draw a lot of parallels between Texas football and Hopkins. So hook them Jays. If Hopkins gets, let's say they just like win, they, they win the games they're supposed to be, right? They, they win the games they're supposed to. If they get a win over Georgetown or Virginia and like one time against Maryland, and they like, I'll say they're back. If they get two, two of those three wins, Maryland, Virginia, Georgetown, I will say publicly that they're back, even if they don't win another game for the rest of the year. If, if, if so if they go like three and ten and their wins yeah. are jacksonville and then virginia and <laughs> maryland and i'm just like yeah they just, like i would probably make the argument that if, they should get the tournament yeah if if you well so would i but then you'd make the same argument of like well 
you know, uh, high points done pretty much that, and they didn't make the tournament. Same with Jacksonville. So, uh, but I, I agree. It, listen, it's fun right now. I love to shit on Hopkins. I don't want Hopkins to be so irrelevant that we can't even shit on them anymore. So I like exactly where they're at right now, where they have hope, but they still, they still stink. Uh, moving elsewhere from, all right, well, should we talk about it? I, I feel like how, how long have we have been going on here for 20 minutes so far? And we haven't really talked about it yet. So should we go to the dome? Wait, oh, like, like physically go to the dome. I, Cause I, I would. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the quick drive up by 81. I wouldn't mind who do, uh, Yeah. I mean, go see, go see Syracuse and Albany this weekend. Go see the biggest boss in lacrosse history live in person <laughs> in, in, in. Yeah. Uh, let's talk it. Let's talk it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Joey Spolina era in Qs is officially underway. Listen, was it a great game from the young man wearing 22? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say so, probably not by his standards, uh, but he does get himself on the board. He goes one for 15 on shooting for the day. Listen, shoot or shoot. And, and that's, that's all you can ask for. You gotta, you gotta shoot hot to get hot. Uh, but Syracuse, they start their season with a, a pretty tight win against Vermont. Uh, so a pretty good showing for the Catamounts on the road. Uh, definitely a, a better showing than, than they had last year. So that's, Move, move, moving on up for the catamounts um i don't know this i i, I don't want to i don't want to say that i think that the syracuse team is going to be very good this year i think that they're going to make some decent noise in the acc i think they're going to pick up a, a pretty a few pretty big uh conference wins i think I that agree. I, I think that Joey Spelina isn't going to go one for 15 the entire season. Uh, I think Alex Simmons will start to kind of mesh in a little bit better. Obviously a lot of, a lot of talk about a guy like Finn Thompson uh, being in a nice little piece there. And let me tell you, Jackson Burt whistle kid out of the Philadelphia area at Radnor high school. Uh, this, this kid just puts up goal. Like he's, he's shifty little water bug out there. So he's going to be a tough guy uh, to keep in check for the whole season. So I don't know. I, I like the Syracuse team. I think that this was a game where they were just all all gripping their stick a little too tight. And that's what she said. Yeah, I've had that problem in the past before. Um, but Finn Thompson is the perfect example of a freshman that let the game come to him. And everyone talked about how extraordinary, like how he had a great debut. Joey Spillina obviously was forcing too much. He knows the pressure that he has. He felt the pressure. And he's just got to realize that. Yeah, I think he like I think that Gary Gates said in the post game like he's just got to let the game come to him. Yeah, like he did not seem like he wanted to get a hat trick so that people on Twitter, people were talking about what a great debut by Spelina is Syracuse back. It seemed like he was like fetching for that headline. Yeah, but you are like it's. Listen, every kid who grows up playing lacrosse 100%. probably like dreams about that moment. You know, 100%. you have you, you have your college debut. So, and for a kid who's that good, I'm sure that those dreams that he had about this debut felt a little bit more like reality. So he was like dead set on trying to make it happen. So he puts up 15 shots. Um, That's exactly my point. That's exactly right. my point. I don't think that like once he gets comfortable in the game. Those expect he starts forgetting less and less about those expectations and starts playing more and more like himself. Oh yeah, okay then yeah exactly. So, so like I just think that this like people overreacting to his performance week one like yeah he didn't play a good game he forced too much he's an eighteen year old fucking kid like yeah what would you do at eighteen years old you were probably fucking like jerking off in your dorm room this guy's playing in the fucking dome so like it's just like I, I don't get these people I, I, I don't want to say that he's not doing the other thing but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm talking. He's celibate. He's celibate. He, has, he just locks himself in. <laughs> but he's uh, – I just think that, like, the people's overreaction to, to Joey Spelina's debut is just re ridiculous. And the funniest fucking take was that guy on Twitter who was like, this is what happens when you play down uh, – when, you, when you're playing – when you're 16 playing 14-year-old. It's like, dude, shut the fuck up. He was playing – he was 14 playing with 18-year-olds. Literally, like, the, the whole reason why – I mean, I, obviously we know 
so much about Joey Spolina just because of, you know, his, his dad and his family, but like really like the biggest reason why he's been like so hyped up is because of the fact that he was playing up so many years in the club scene this whole time, like playing up two years with guys like Brendan O'Neill and, and that group. So the fact that this, this guy on Twitter and it's, it, Part of me like wants to just completely disregard anyone who has an anonymous account on Twitter shitting on guys. So whether it's, you know, the, the, whoever said that Brennan O'Neill is a bust, I'm pretty sure that that was an anonymous account. The, the guy saying that, oh, well, this is, this is what happens when Joey Spolina like reclasses and plays guys who are like four years younger than I'm like, he wasn't. So it's hard to like, get too worked up over anonymous accounts. Um, but like, if, if you're going to be an anonymous account, you can't be like just blatantly wrong and say that he's playing like, yeah, he, yeah. he's playing against guys like so much younger than him. When the entire time that we've watched him grow up, he's literally playing with guys like two years older than him. Wait, that's hilarious. I think that now that I think about it, the account that tweeted out like about Joey Spelina playing down his whole purpose of his account is to like expose the cross for like people playing down or whatever, like he, that's like his whole thing is to be like people should play by age by age and not by what class you graduate, right? So yeah, he, I, I think that that he was fucked his... his whole argument because Joey Spelina actually was younger playing up when in his case was that he wants to stop people from playing down. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. giving it's it's giving a vegan like a ribeye steak like these yeah. like fuck, it... you know what this whole thing that I was doing is just worthless because <laughs> I just got proof so wrong. <laughs> It's also like, I know, and I know people are like, why do you give the anonymous people, like, why do you even like respond? Because well, that's what Twitter, we do here. Because Twitter is awesome. It's free. And these people just like, like, even though it's an anonymous account, someone might truly think that, which is awesome. Like, awesome to think about. Like, and I personally, I like, I'm a, I'm very dumb. And I like these Twitter accounts to interact with them. Like, see guys, like, it could be worse. Like, you, the takes could get worse. Like noted the, by yeah, five, they, noted by five. You thought that was bad. How about Brendan O'Neill's a fucking bust? Joey Spelina, locker room cancer. <laughs> yeah, they 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 could always they could always get worse. You find you find me some look anonymous lacrosse Twitter account that has less than like seven followers, and you are in for a take quick that'll ruin your life. Um, you know what? Also, is I'm talking about Twitter accounts right now. One of my biggest pet peeves that happens every single year with Week Zero is you get the lacrosse handicappers coming out that are like played fucking like JB lacrosse for three years, got suited up to come up to playoffs their senior year. And they're like, well, I know, I know lacrosse and I know gambling. And they start being like, well, here I am. I'm weekend picks. I'm two and two plus four and a half units. It's like, what? How are you like two and two? Oh, well, I've got five units on that. Game. And then they'll, like, they'll start like doing like the units and everything. And then my week five, you notice that they they don't start displaying their units anymore. And they're not doing picks anymore. Yeah. Hey, 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 my brother played on an attack line with Brennan O'Neill when they were in third grade. I know ball. Do you want me to help you get anyone on the on the podcast? By the way, uh Yeah. Like, yeah. No, yeah. I, I will yeah. say I will say somebody sent me uh somebody sent me like, dude, Marquette's gonna fucking kill Lindenwood. My buddy played on Lindenwood, like they stink, like it's like they he helped get D one, like they stink. And I was like, dude, I fucking hate you. crushed them. Crushed them. <laughs> I was just like, fuck, that guy nailed it. Well, yeah, but like, what what do you expect? No, no, of course, of course. It was just so funny because it was like the one G, and he was like, "Hey, like hot tip." I was like, "Dude, fuck these hot tips!" <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "Shit, he fucking nailed it." Um. Well, yeah, but so back to the dome. Listen, it, it wasn't a great offensive day from anybody on Syracuse. Uh, you know, we had that that BTP uh, assist that you know was a nice little highlight, but it wasn't like anyone was lighting the world on fire in the dome. Uh, uh, but the fact disagree. But the f- well, gotta shout him out. The goalie for Syracuse, LIU transfer. Looks like after if we're going over first team All American after that one. Uh, he seventy two percent saves, thirteen saves, five goals against, seventy two percent save percentage. I thought he was the MVP of the game. I just want to shout him out really quick for my goals. Yeah, good, but go. good shout out. I was yeah. I was saying that no one had a good offensive game. Okay, so, okay, so, sorry, 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 sorry. I want to give I want to give him his shine. Will Mark deserves his shine, but um, but I will say like back to Spolina though real quick because listen we're gonna have four years to beat this into the ground. Um, the the fact though like the fact that he still got fifteen shots off like let's not disregard that. 
Let's yeah. not disregard the fact that he's a freshman playing in his first D1 game, and he still managed to get 15 shots off. So he's not going to go 7% shooting the rest of his career. Like he's probably going to jack that up closer to, I mean, dude, if he goes, if he goes 33% shooting, which, you know, a, a little bit high, but it's not like unheard of. He has a five goal performance in his, in his debut. So that was quick math for you. Yeah. That was impressive. First off, as a writer yourself, that was very quick math. Exactly. I would love to see what people would say if he had two more goals, two more, where like you're still probably shooting, like do the math and 15%. No, I don't know. But oh, that would be 20%, right? A fifth of 15. Yeah. Quick math. Big yeah, math just, guy. Yeah. Just keep bragging. But yeah, he, <laughs> uh, if he had goals, I'd love to see the narrative then. I'd love to see the narrative if he has, if he has a hat trick. Like if just two of those goals go in like two gimmies or whatever. Um, so it, it just, it's, it's interesting. I think the one thing that stuck out to me was the eight shots on goal. So it wasn't like he was just like missing the cage, looking for corners. It seems like I, I'd like to go back and see how many were easy saves, great saves. Um, but yeah, like you said, I think that he'll be fine. He'll be fine. It's a, it, it is a nice little though. We're at a good spot in the sport of lacrosse where we can have a kid come in, play his first college game and like already has this much buzz around him. And like, people are like, uh, oh, yep. See, he told you he wasn't going to be great. Like it, it just goes to show that there's, there, there's, there's good, uh, there's juice in college lacrosse right now. And like, let's even say like, you know, if he had 100 goals through his first two seasons, he might still be called a bust because that's how high his expectations are, which is ridiculous. I mean, just look at Brendan O'Neill. Yeah, like, and it's it's not it's like expectations, and then you also have to deal with like crazy Syracuse fans as well. And you also have to like bring bring back a program that has essentially died. Yeah, so uh, it's it's a tough situation to be in, but I listen. I I do. I'm a big Joey Spillane guy, so I think that he's going to figure that out rather quickly. Um, and I think that I I, I don't want to overreact to the overreaction, but I think that he will be uh, able to back up the majority of that hype. Uh, you want to know who had a great offensive performance this weekend? We know. A, a team that I've been very down on and I've been celebrating their lack of success heavily. Yes, I know exactly who you're going to say. The Penn State Nittany Lions, they came out and they uh, they put a nice little beat down on Lafayette. So uh, I think that they were one of the only teams to to reach the 20 mark this weekend. So they went 21 to 11 over Lafayette. Uh, I'd, I'd have to go back and re-listen to what I said on last week's episode. But I, I do know. think like, like I, I said that I give a specific number that they'd have to win by to where Tambroni's seat would be blasted with the AC. Yeah, you have to say it. You have to say, one, that Penn State's back, and two, that Tam Brody isn't uh, on the hot seat. Um, as, a, as a man of my word, uh, I, I think that uh, – listen, it's, it's, it's over Lafayette, right? So I'm not going to give them all their flowers just yet. But trying to think about if they had anything close to this last season, Let, let's just go back and, and look at some of their uh, let's, let's look at their record from last year. So yeah, I mean, they, they hit the 20 mark one time last year and it was against Lafayette, but it was, <laughs> but it was significantly close. It was, it was a 20 to 15 yeah. win. So, so that was only by five. Um, and then they rattled off a few losses in a row and none of them really good. Uh, you know, the win over Yale and then a shit ton of losses and then a one goal win over Michigan. So, yeah, I mean, it, are they following a similar pattern right out of the gates to what they did last year with a hit, hit the 20 spot against Lafayette? Yes. But I think that this was a much more uh, definitive. I can't speak at all. That's a tough word for me to get out. Definitive, mm -hmm. definitive and blue blood. Those have been really giving me some hangups today. Been getting been getting hung at X on those ones. But either way, uh, you go out, you win by 10 against Lafayette in your opening game of the season. I think that Penn State, I'm willing to say that Tamboroni's not, his ass isn't on fire right now. I might not say that they're fully back just yet, but his ass isn't on fire. And I do believe that we have lost Dukes uh, right now. It seems like he is frozen, but nope, he's back. Am I back? 
you're back now. And I, I, I did. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Yeah. That was, uh, unfortunately the HQ Wi-Fi, which fucking sucks. Well, uh, oh, real quick, before you, if you have anything to say about Penn State, but before you get into that, if if we are throwing shout outs around there, uh, quick shout out to Ryan O'Connor, LSM on Penn State, coming right out of Springfield, taught the kid everything he knew. He had a nice little, nice little first goal of his career against Lafayette. So look forward to a lot more pole goals in Happy Valley when Ryan O'Connor is on the field. Holy shit. All right. Well, this is crazy. There's a uh, – so Penn State, I just want to shout out. They're um, tied for the leading scorer right now for Penn State lacrosse is uh, Chris Jordan, uh, Garden City native, <laughs> which I just found out he played for Penn State. I was looking at his profile because I was like, where did – I didn't know he went to Penn State. St. Lawrence, St. Lawrence transfer. This kid was so small, I remember, in high school, and now he's, he's like 6'4". So that's – I just like saw that, and I was just like my brain's in a pretzel, but – Shout out to him. Uh, clearly had a great debut for his D, his D1 debut. So, yeah, I think that just with the Garden City guy on that attack line, I think it's definitive. You can say that yeah, Penn State is back, and you can expect them in the championship weekend. There's a chance that that's what they were missing. Uh, yeah. Have you noticed, like, there's a trend across, like, sports where, like, you get a Garden City guy on the roster, you're probably going to win a championship. I think that's what D1 coaches don't really understand. So, like, I got some eligibility left. So, if you want me on the sidelines, again, you get me gear. I'll be there. Uh, I could be a morale coach. I could be an emergency goaltender. Really, anything you need. Noted noted national champion winner, Justin Gutterding. (laughs) Oh, I think he he didn't. I I know that he didn't. I was was fucking with you. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck. But he does have NCAA records. So, um, but yeah, so that's all I have on Penn State. Uh, pretty good. Uh, were, were there any other any other games or any other performances? Obviously, we had the the Brendan O'Neill is a bust, and and that wasn't. I couldn't even understand. That wasn't an overreaction to anything, right? Like he had no. He just said he's a bust. Like he's just like yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, like, like it wasn't over. Work. It wasn't. It wasn't reacting to anything, right? Because no, he had just, he had seven just, points in that first game. It was just nobody forced him. Nobody, nobody forced him to say it. Nobody, nobody forced him to say it. Nobody like, forced him to say it. But with like with the Spolina thing, like I I can understand because like we saw him struggle in the first game, and like I can understand why someone would be oh. like, oh yeah, like but like this was like dude, like Brennan had two and five in the first game, and then he just like then he just like pumped high point in on Tuesday night. Like what led this cat? on Twitter to be like, yeah, like Brennan O'Neill has a lot of potential. He just hasn't tapped into it. It's like, well, he just put up seven points. So I mean, he was a fastest player in one of the best programs in, ever to score hundred. It's just fucking ridiculous. I think what he was trying to say was who cares that he scored seven points. I still think he's a bust. It's like, what did the dude have to do to like not make him a bust? Be a two time first team all American, two time to wartime winner. Yeah. I, th- I think I, he'd probably have to have two national championships as well right now. Or at least at the very least, a runner up. Yeah, like if you're, um, you can't also blame Duke missing the tournament on like just Brendan O'Neill last year, like ridiculous to even like consider. Yeah, well, what, what was the lady's name who did the? Uh, oh, you talking about that fucking Donna bitch, bitch ass Donna? Donna, yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna I, say I, it. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> but you all know what I'm gonna say. Well, Whatever word just popped into your head when I said that, that's what I was saying. <laughs> No, we'll find out next Tuesday. Um, <laughs> any any other overreaction? Oh, well, I have I, I have a bit of an overreaction here. I don't think that Queens is going to win a national championship this year. Okay, why do you say that? Uh, Queens University they get their first D one game underway. Uh, they, so they played against Navy on Sunday. This was Navy coming off of a win against Mount St. Mary's. Uh, they ended up losing 19 to five. So Queens, this might not be your year. Sorry for the overreaction. Sorry for the hot take, but you can count me out on putting my future on Queens. Fair. Fair. I, I like, I mean, my hot take is that I like watching Xavier Arline play lacrosse more than football. I think that he might, he's probably better at lacrosse and football and that I understand why he still wants to play football, but it's way cooler to watch him play lacrosse and football. <laughs> and then also like Skalniak from last year, like we were in love with him. 
Yep. Yeah, like just seeing him back out there um, it was great to see. I love watching his highlights. But yeah, yeah, I'm I'm still not crazy on on Navy. I think that they'll be fine in the Patriot League. Um, but I, I mean, the game against Mount St. Mary's, they look like okay. It, it's you know, it's it's opening week. They they look fine. I think that uh, I can't really judge anything off a, a game against Queens. Um, I mean, it, it would be cool if if we got to see a lot more Xavier R line this year because I know how much Lax Twitter loves them. Um, I think they might build it up a, a little much. Like that might be a little of an overreaction on on the other end of things, um, but we'll we'll see. I think it'd be cool to, if if one of the if one of the service academies had a good year. I think this weekend we're going to see a good test for Army coming out of the gates against UMass. Uh, I th- feel like lacrosse is always better when one of the service academies are doing well. Agreed. Uh, one more. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, obviously, it, we're we're going to do the same thing again this year, where we kind of fell into the trap last year. I feel like where we're not going to get a chance to talk about Maryland so much, just because it's like, how much can we say? Oh yeah, like they're so much better than everybody else that they play against. So, a, a just demanding lead demanding win against Richmond uh, a game that, you know, you thought maybe, Hey, this could be tight. Richmond could get, you know, they could be pesky in this one and give them a good fight. No, that was a 15 to four win. Um, yeah. And the uh, Dante trader, the football player, the starting safety for Maryland football, who got some uh, time against Richmond. It, the dude was so good at defense that it seemed like he was beating people to the spot or knowing where they were going to go before they knew they were going to go there. So it was just yeah. like wa- like watching him was just like it, this is it, it's almost unfair. And what what Maryland does with their short stick units year in year out is highly impressive. And yeah, I'm not really gonna the talk best to way you guys to, about how good way Maryland to is. You guys all know how good Maryland is. The best way to beat a defender like Dante Trader is where you you kind of need someone who's bad at lacrosse, like so bad at lacrosse that it's like like just so fundamentally flawed to where if he thinks that he's going to beat you to a spot, you're so bad at the game that you weren't even trying to get to that spot anyway. So then you end up, you end up in the wrong position, but because you're in the wrong position, you're not running right into him. So you just need to, you need to start recruiting worse players if you want to beat him. (laughs) That's uh, I have one more game that I do want to talk about, but I'm going to save it for. Sh- should we get into a, a segment here? Yeah, which one? Should we, should we should we do buy sell? Yes. Do you want to do your week zero overreaction, your definitive one? Oh, okay. Yeah. So my sure my my number one overreaction I feel like is that Brennan O'Neill is a bust, and I know that it was just one person saying it, so it's like I, I feel like the the biggest reaction that that got was like everyone piling on to shit on that overreaction. Uh, But it is a really fun overreaction to talk about because here's the thing. He's not a hundred percent wrong. I went back. I looked at the stats. I did my research. Brennan O'Neill never scored a PLL goal. So never scored a single goal in the PLL or the NLL. Well, Well, he had to have been drafted then, right? Hear me out on this one. Brennan O'Neill didn't even get drafted to the PLL. Wow. They've so had nepotism, what, they, nepotism got him on Team USA. They've had, what, three drafts so far in the PLL? They didn't take him one time. Jeez. So. I apologize. I mean, you, you, yeah, you tell me. Yeah, I apologize. Um, well, he had to have had an MLL call. I, I actually, I looked into that. I searched the tape. Uh, not a single one. Not PBLA. even a GB. How about a PBLA, PBLA goal? Uh, well, he did, but then we <laughs> <laughs> got defunct as the league pulled it. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> he he was about to score, but then they shut the lights off. So <laughs> I think the ball went into the net like right yeah. after they. The, yeah, and they, like the COVID, like when COVID paused, and like people were playing like their their, their college basketball games, and COVID paused, and they're like, "Well, yeah. we'll just finish this game, I guess." And yeah, and, and the then the. Counted the website shut down where they were keeping track of stats. So now we'll, we'll never have it again. Uh, but yeah, so Brennan O'Neill certified bust. Well, my week zero overreaction is uh, I've seen the script. I got the script from Donna and congratulations to the Denver pioneers. You guys are heading to the final four. Bill Tierney's last first day of school 
handled business against Utah 12-4. Look, the script is the script. You can't really avoid the script. I've seen it. They won't get an at-large bid. They will beat Georgetown in the Big East Championship game. They will go on a run for the histories at the willpower of Bill Tierney's last hoorah. Um, it will be a magical 30 for 30. Uh, it'll be one that we will like in lacrosse, not like the other 30 for 30 that's in lacrosse. So this will be a, uh, this will be a great, great, a great, a great run for Bill Tierney's last season. Uh, the last time that, well, the only time that Denver won a national championship championship weekend was in Philly and it's coming back to Philly this year. So nice little, yeah. Yeah. I mean, thank you, Donna, for the early script. Listen, they, they say you can't write a script this good. And Donna said, well, guess what, bitch? I Did can. you get sent the script? Uh, no, I, I, I didn't. I, Yours is probably still in the mail. Maybe, we, maybe we'll open up that bad boy next week. Yeah. Well, if I did have a script, you know what it would say? Uh, Brendan O'Neill wins the tour, on. No, because now we're going into buy, sell. And I am buying all the stock on the planet right now in the Merrimack Warriors. So they come out, they get a nice 10 7 win against Hofstra to start off their season. Big game out of the Bruni brothers. I put the, I put Merrimack in my, uh, I believe I had them ranked as my fourth best team in the world. The fourth <laughs> best lacrosse team on the planet last week, right? Just behind Team USA, Georgetown, and Brown, I believe. So Merrimack coming in at number four. Might have to jack them up a little bit here up the rankings because they get a 10-7 win against Hofstra. Um, like I said, Ro- Rooney Brothers looking pretty solid. Uh, they're, they're some Long Island guys. How do, how do you say that? Syosset? Syosset. Yep. Uh, so a couple, couple of just island boys uh, taking care of business offensively. And then uh, Henry Vote, I believe, is, is how you pronounce the last name, V-O-G-T. Uh, had one of the better saves that we'll see all season. Nice little dive all the way across the crease. Um, in so in, in their opening game of the season, and I'm looking at Merrimack right now, and and I'm checking out their America East schedule. And listen, I I think that this is a team who can make make a lot of noise, if you will. Um, and you know, sprinkled throughout the season, they've got a game. Uh, they've got a game at Denver towards the end of this month. And then they finish off the season with a game at Duke in May. Uh, so couple of big games on the schedule. And you got to remember, like when you're going down to play against Duke in May, like their it's best ridiculous. player, their best player is a bust. <laughs> that so, is so ridiculous. Like, the, I for, like with the ACC championships, how they don't do the, the tournament anymore. So you just forget that like some of these teams just <laughs> schedule yeah, shit they, off things. <laughs> but here's I'm, so I'm, funny. but maybe maybe at that point duke is just kind of chilling maybe, maybe they're resting guys for the oh tournament. hot take may flu they have the february like dump they're gonna get like the may dump yeah well here's if if duke doesn't i think that that's a good point because duke is so used to every year dropping a game to either like a mid-major team or you know for all those years it was like denver if they don't lose in February, they have to replace that loss somewhere in the schedule. Yep. Might as well be to Merrimack in May. Um, but and no, seriously, we'll- I, I, I I do think, though, that Merrimack is a very good lacrosse team. I think that they look really solid. So, um, you know, those two games withstanding, I think that the rest of their schedule uh, set up pretty well. I, I like both them and Vermont and the America East. Yeah, and I – and I think that uh, we'll be heading into next year talking about the Mer- Mary Mac train, just like we're talking about the Jacksonville train a little bit. Would love you know to see it. Um, Would love to see it. All right, my buy. I'm buying stock in Arlotta Stadium. And it's not for what you think, because you might be saying, like, oh, they're going to play in the bubble for the first couple of games. It's cold in South Bend. I know. I saw Ohio State Stadium, nice renovated first across facility, dude. Our, it made me realize how much better Arlotta is than every single other lacrosse only facility in the country. Um, just like we talk about the spring games on the grass, the bleachers, 
Ohio State has a nice facility. Don't get me wrong. And I'm, I'm sure the recruits are going to love it. But for a viewer like myself, Arlotta still takes the cake. So that's why I'm buying stock in Arlotta. It's a good time to buy stock in or, or in Arlotta because as we get, you know, as the grass gets a little bit greener, the the temperature rises, you start to get a little bit more sundresses out. Like at that point, you're like the, the stock is going to be so high at our at Arlotta when the hills packed. So it's a good time to get in early right now. Yeah, and it, it just it's it takes the cake. It takes the cake all, all around. Best across experience. Like you're talking like a May game at Arlotta when it's Duke Notre Duke Notre Dame last year fucking rocked when we thought it was a winning get in game for the NCAA tournament and then that just all went to shit and now it's just a memory that's fading for everybody. Uh, here's a question for you: uh, Are lot of one o'clock game or one that bleeds into the night? One o'clock game always, okay. always uh, hit the pregame a little bit early. You know, you get your you get your high noons, twelve packs for me, tw- j- black cherry. Maybe bring the TV outside. Have the cords going inside to do the kitchen with like extension mm-hmm. cords, a little trashy. Um, and then you know, people tripping over the wires. There, and shit. There's really nothing better than that first day drink of the year where you bring the TV outside. There is also nothing better than the first day drink where like it, it gets like 56 in the day, and you're like, oh, we could like chill outside, like maybe like a sweatshirt and shorts. And then all of a sudden, the sun still goes down pretty early around like 6 30. And you're just cold as shit, but the game's not over. So you just have to man it up for that last second half. I have yeah, been there 20 too many times. You, yeah, you've you've been drinking enough to where you don't feel it that bad. But then like the next day you wake up and like your lips are chapped and like your like, yeah. hands are like all like dried out and shit like that. But yeah. it was totally worth it because it was a great day drink uh, and a great time. Yeah, watching watching on the hill at Arlotta, definitely a, a bucket list item. Yeah, that would be that would be something to to venture at. Would be if we picked one 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 game a year, we were just like we're gonna do it. Like I, I haven't seen in like even like the it's not the Carrier Dome anymore, but I'd love to see a game in the dome, preferably a Notre Dame one because they just own the dome. It's still line. it's still the Carrier Dome to me, but they did put the logo of whatever it's like. T, is it TDA or something? It's yeah. it's, it's it's some ADA. sort of initials, but like whatever it is, they made the logo on the field so obnoxiously large to where it's like you like can't avoid like it. Per, yeah pretend that it's still the Carrier Dome. Um, yeah, I think bucket like, the trip to Arlotta to watch and so Ryder Garnsey, if you're listening to this right now, which we know you are. You've probably got an extra spare room that you can put the boys in. So we'll come out. We'll uh, I'll, listen. I'll, I'll, I'll cook you dinner. We'll, 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 we'll get it going. We'll, we'll make it worth your time, but bring the boys out and we'll, uh, we'll catch a game. We'll we check should out do that. We should do ne- next week for a segment. We should do snake draft, snake draft, uh, bucket list, where to watch the lacrosse game. I like that. I like that yeah. idea a lot. So everyone listening right now, make sure that you come back for that next week. Uh, if I'm going to sell a stock right now, I'm selling a stock on suits. Suits can get the fuck out of here. Uh, sorry, men's warehouse or anywhere else that sells a suit. Uh, but this year we finally did it boys and girls. We finally talked Gary gate into ditching the sideline suit while he's coaching. So Gary finally shows up to a game wearing just some some standard athleisure wear, some team issued gear instead of a, a shirt, a tie, and a sports coat. And guess what? Syracuse comes out on top, seven five. Wasn't the prettiest game of all time, but Gary Gate is undefeated in games that he's coached where he isn't wearing a suit. Facts, facts, and uh, I think that that's one step in the right direction for Cuse to be back. And agree more. here's what I'm selling. My Big Ten Network subscription. I don't think mm. I'm going to do it this year. Mm-hmm. I, I, the, the, it, it sucks every year. Uh, I hate the video cast. I'm not a fan of the broadcasters that much. Uh, I say that much because I don't want to offend anybody. But no offense taken. Bring some excitement to the table. One time for the me, thing- would you? The and thing I, about I don't need to, the thing I, about the Big Ten Network is like, like what, are, what are we watching it for, right? It's to see... It's to see Maryland, but exactly it's, like, my dude, point. it's like, you know, that the final score is not going to be that close. And even if you do want to watch, if the game's at Maryland, then guess what? You're watching it from like 
120 feet in the air because they always have the worst camera angle. Um, exactly my point. It's like, I'm so done. Like until the big 10 gets competitive again, I will not be paying for the big 10 network. So you might be like, dude, you don't know fucking shit about the big 10. Yeah, you're right. And I'm saving fucking money doing it. And you know what? At the end of the year, we're, I'm going to sit here and I like, remember when Maryland ran the big 10 and Oh, remember when they won the big 10 championship? Oh yeah. Cause I knew it was coming in February. And now, you know, you know, yeah. A fiscally responsible king. But the thing that you can do is like, I, like I think you can just buy like a month of it, like at yeah. the end of the season when you need it for their tournament. Exactly. And that's that's all you need. Um, I will. It took me a little while this this past weekend to figure out where how to watch some of these games. So like, there's the there's the ACC network, but it's like they're like ACC Network X or whatever. So it's like the, yeah. the one that's like just streaming, and I couldn't figure out. Cause I have Hulu for, for live TV. And most of the times any game that's on ESPN plus, if it's like, if it's slated to be on ESPN plus, it just kind of shows up in my Hulu in under game, but like the ACC network X, I need to go specifically into the ESPN app to figure out how to watch those ones. So I don't know. A lot, a lot of rust to shake off, I guess, for the for the opening season. But if anyone was having the same issues, I think yeah. that was the case. Where like you can't some some of these games, like I guess you have to go to ESPN Plus to watch instead of just through your Hulu. Yeah, I've had that uh, that issue. This is weird. I just got this uh, notification by the guy that I'm just reading this right now, so I'll share it live. The guy for the. Uh, the guy who said that Brennan O'Neill was overrated that anonymous Twitter account, I'm not going to give him their name. Uh, it's the PLL Nationals guy. <laughs> I just can't say their name. But he was oh, okay. like, there was, so Jake, shout out to Jake Marsh. PLL Championship Series is coming out. Um, I think Jake's, Jake will be calling some games. Me and Billy are going to be there, boots on the ground at the beer lounge. So come, come hang out with us, come chill. But it was announced today that Jake will be on the broadcast team. And uh, the lacrosse network said is PFT going going to be joining him in the booth soon, which would be awesome, right? Like get get more eyes on the sport or think it's just a win win advantage. And this guy tweeted responding goes, "Wonder how Dudes and Jordy feel about this." I don't know. Not in a hypoth in a hypothetical. I, I don't know. I don't care. Like calling games really isn't my thing. Ooh, I, I could not I could not call a game to save my goddamn life. I I don't know personally. I would rather hang out in the. Uh, in the beer lounge. That's what I majored in. Jake. Jake Enter, majored enter, in entertain business. some clients. Yeah. Me and Bill, that's actually what we're doing. We're entertaining some clients. <laughs> that's literally the name of the game for us. So yeah, it, it, just like, I was just reading it. I was like, well, be mad at what? Like doing, like, I don't need that pressure. I don't need to, I, I don't need that. I talk too much about lacrosse for this one hour a week. We do. It's a lot of lacrosse that we talk about. Yeah, I just plus, saw that. Plus, so, there are some, plus there are some beers to be drank. So. Oh, I, and clients Bill, to be entertained. Bill, Billy might, might Billy might be fighting really quick. Billy might be fighting uh supposedly Billy McFarland, the guy from Firefest, and then maybe this other guy. So he was talking like I, I need I can't have Billy fight. I need to see him entertaining clients to them. I, I need to see him hung over his balls. Uh I need I need I need full Billy. I need full Billy. And if you want to see full Billy, buy your tickets to the PLL championship series and come meet us. The plug master right there. Um all right, so let's let's wrap things up a little bit here, and let's just talk about a couple of these games uh, heading into. I guess we do have to figure out week one, maybe of of the season. Yeah, week one. All right, so week one of the season. Um, listen, a cu couple good ones here. So we've got uh, you know Syracuse Albany. I think is going to be one where uh, you know Albany could could be pretty exciting this year maybe not exciting is, is the word but they can at least be entertaining to watch uh and i feel like we need to watch every syracuse game moving forward until joey spelina does find himself into a groove uh so that's um i believe that that's what that's tonight right so we have don't don't we have friday night lacks ahead of friday us night here lacks, 6 p.m syracuse albany yeah so uh th I things get know. going yeah pretty Listen, that's, that's a good game to watch tonight. Uh, you know, finish up your work week. We're heading into the Super Bowl. Kind of relax a little bit. Get your ass on the couch. Maybe pour yourself a soda pop and watch uh, Joey Spolina 
get another 15 shots off and maybe this time he'll splash five of them. Uh, I, I do think that Syracuse, I think Syracuse by like four. Yeah. Four or five, maybe. I think Syracuse is going to win by like the same, maybe six or seven. All right. Uh, so that's six o'clock tonight on ACC Network X. I, I got to figure out a better way to say that. Uh, the Saturday slate of game. So Duke Jacksonville could be getting angry Duke again, or maybe, maybe, just maybe, we finally see a slip up and get some February Duke. So maybe Jacksonville coming off of that loss against uh, Hopkins. Maybe they're following the same script as last year. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe this is the script 2.0. Uh, so Jacksonville, they're the home team. They've got Duke going down to them. Little, little trip for Duke. So they played on Tuesday night. Now they have to make the trip down to Jacksonville to play on Saturday. That's a noon game. A lot of moving parts there for the Blue Devils. Uh, that game, I actually have no idea how to watch that game. It's probably got to be on ESPN Plus at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always just – and also, if you guys don't know where to find these games, you can go to Inside the Cross. You go to watch, and then usually they – is an easy way to find it. That's what I, I, I do want to give a plug though, real quick, to uh, our our good friend and yours, uh, Chris Jast on Twitter. So if you're you know if you're listening to this, chances are you're probably involved with Lax Twitter somehow. Um, so you probably know Chris through Twitter. But he did make a, a great Google Doc little spreadsheet here that has pretty much all the games the entire season listed out for you. Uh, so it's a great Google right. doc to have on hand. So uh, go throw Chris Jast a follow, but yeah, that game's probably going to be on ESPN plus. Um, I would love to see Duke just fucking massacre teams all season long. I think that, that would be the most entertaining thing to do. So wow. Brennan O'Neill, five goals a game, Dyson Williams, five goals a game, McAdory, like three, and four. three, and yeah, two and four, three and three a game. A uh, couple more, you know, Fogo goals out of Jake Naso. So that would be that would be fun to watch. I would love to see just like Denanzer too. Duke. Yeah, they're just it's. I'm telling you, it's gonna be murders row for for Duke. I I truly think that they are just gonna clobber, clobber. Uh, yeah, our Army and UMass kind of talked about this before, but that's you know that's always a good good matchup between a couple of gritty programs. Black uh, Sox. A lot of black socks. I was just about to say that's a big black sock matchup in that game. Huge. Just, <laughs> oh, it's so gross to even think about. But yeah, black sock galore, probably some black cleats. Just, uh, and you know what? Not even just black cleats, but like some of them, like, like the shoelace snapped on their cleats and they just like, instead of putting in a new lace, they like kind of like tied the broken parts together. Yeah. Like, just yeah, ugly, yeah. ugly and gritty as could be. Yep. Yep, totally, totally know what you're what you're talking about there. Um, but yeah, so Army favored in that one by a goal and a half. So I think I think everyone's expecting to see a good tight game in that one, uh, mm-hmm. and and I wouldn't expect anything less. That game also on at noon on ESPN Plus. Uh, anything on the schedule that really stands out to you? Uh, what I will say is it's absolutely fucking insane. And so mm-hmm. I have like one part of this that's. I'm really happy for college across about and another part that I'm like furious about them. So one, it's insane that they would schedule any games for Super Bowl Sunday. Just, just a wild thing for any scheduler to do. Um, I will say the Penn state Villanova game is on Sunday at noon, which I kind of do wish like I, I will never don't take that the wrong way. I wouldn't wish that the Eagles weren't in the Super Bowl, but if this were like any other year where the Eagles weren't, in the Super Bowl, I, I would have actually liked to have gone to go see that one. Um, but scheduling that game on Super Bowl Sunday and then also Syracuse Holy Cross at five on ESPNU right before the Super Bowl, idiotic. Wait, it's at um, one. Oh, is it? That's what I see on Inside the Cross, uh, at least. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so Which what I'm saying, I, yeah. I actually tend to disagree with this take because I tend to – I like – it's a big waiting game for me for like going up to the Super Bowl, so I kind of like to have that – Broken up for me. My team's not playing in the Super Bowl this year. Yeah. I, I've seen too many Super Bowls with the Patriots. I, I'm a, just, you know, it just gets exhausting. We need we need some years off. But I like I like waste management though for that waiting for the mm, Super Bowl because it's one of the ones where guys. 
one golf guy, but two, like you can like check in and check out where it's, it's not like you have to be watching it constantly. All right. You know what? Yeah. So I, I looked at the wrong, looked at the wrong time schedule there. So if, yeah, if it's a one o'clock game, then that's perfect. That's better than a five o'clock game. Um, but what I did want to give college across kudos for is the fact that we had all those games start up last week where, there's really jack shit else going on. I know you're a college basketball guy, so there's yeah. college basketball. Like that, that's a lot going on. But then Pro Bowl week, no one gives a shit about Pro Bowl. NHL All-Star week, no one gives a shit about the NHL All-Star game. Regular season NBA, who gives a shit? So uh, that, that was that was a good time for a college lacrosse to start. And uh, I guess the games that I'm looking at that we haven't really touched on, it's nice to see Michigan finally schedule some tough competition with – they have Virginia to start the year. So, and they, they really had like put together a nice, uh, I think they, I think they heard the noise they're, last year. I think they're, they heard, they're definitely not going to start the season seven and zero this year. They have Virginia, they have Hofstra, um, Canisius Marquette, Delaware, Harvard, Notre Dame, And then they get right into conference play. So like Harvard, Notre Dame and Virginia is no joke. So uh, shout out to Michigan for kind of hearing the criticism there. So they got, they got a, you got a tough one on Saturday against Virginia. Um, besides that, what was the other game that I was kind of eyeing down? Well, here's I guess like Vermont, Vermont BU. If you kind of like that action, um, that's a, that's a good like American East Patriot League matchup. But what, what yeah, were you gonna good say? Little, good little like. Uh, I, you still have to consider Patriot League. Maybe mid, it's like the top tier of mid major. So nice yeah, little, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had that argument matchup, last yeah. year. Yeah. Um, where, where, how do you feel about Loyola as a program right now? So they were a top tier program, I think, for a while. Like they were almost, I don't want to say a Gonzaga for comparing it to college basketball, but a team like a mid major that could get top recruits and kind of be in that championship weekend quarterfinals mix. Last year was obviously mid-major. bad. Last year was obviously bad, but here's my problem with college across, or not problem with college across. It's probably a problem with me. Is I don't really want to speak on a team that I don't know too much about until I see them play, and that's where I'm kind of at with Loyola. If you're telling me just off the top of my head, like yeah, they had a disappointing year, do I expect them to bounce back in some way? Yes, but I don't really know who they have. They can like they had Lindley, who was like a great player. Um, there forever. Uh, is he still there? That'd be crazy. It's it's. I don't know because all these kids. I let me let me go check. No, that, that. Uh, that's what that's what I was kind of saying. It's, it's so hard because all these kids have like so many years of eligibility. Dude, that's why. Um, that's why I, I was kind of talking to you about this. Is that's why I kind of like the PL, the PLL in a way. Like you kind of know like. When someone retires, it's a very big announcement or whatever, whatever. Like when people just like graduate and shit and new people come in with college lacrosse and like college sports in general, it's so hard to keep up with. Yeah. Not I mean, him, him, him and Olmstead were seniors last year, but like you would think that you would have seen the them in the PL, it, that the they would have been in the PLL if, yeah. Um, but what I, what I was getting at though is just the, the chat, the, the hypothetical lines out there is that, Maryland's looking for almost a, a 10, a double digit win on Saturday. Maryland is? If, oh, if, like the- if, if there was a hypothetical line out there, it looks like it would be somewhere around the eight and a half. Yeah, range. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Maryland is, is just a different breed of, uh, they're, they're ridiculous. Yeah, and granted, I, I, I mean, last, not, last if, year, if that's what you're going off of, they're not Loyola. I'll confidently say that Conf, Loyola this year, I wouldn't say is a top 15 team. Like, do I think that the, I don't want to say like that, that they're bad or that they won't be back because I don't think they're in the same place as like a Hopkins is, if that makes any sense. Like, I think that they could, they could, they could rebuild it back up. They got a great coach in Toomey. So, uh, yeah. Did we talk about Hopkins, Georgetown? Oh, uh, we briefly talked about it earlier in the show, just saying that that would be a better litmus test for Hopkins uh, if if they are indeed going to be back or not. Um, but yeah, so Hopkins and Georgetown, 
Uh, so that is a one o'clock game on Saturday. You can watch that on ESPN plus. Uh, yeah. I mean, re- really excited to see what Georgetown uh, can do with that one. Uh, I believe the game is at Homewood though. I mean, Ho- Homewood and, and Georgetown's facility, both some just classic places to watch, watch a lacrosse game. Um, yeah. E- excited to see what Georgetown looks like, uh, especially considering, you know, We've we've seen I a am. lot of the kids before, but they were wa- they were wearing different uniforms. So I'm excited yeah, to see you at UNC, yeah. yeah, UNC 2.0. And then the last game I'm kind of interested in. I watch this game every year randomly. Again, I was kind I'm kind of a Providence Lax guy. I really I, I watch uh, Providence Bryant, and I watch and, the Providence Brown games. So Providence Providence Bryant is pretty is like your brand. Yeah, I you're, mean, I, you're the biggest Providence Bryant guy that I know. Yeah, and like yeah, I am, and like. Brian obviously lost. I feel like a lot of people. Um, they lost McGovern, obviously, but yeah. And then I think Prov- Providence is just like in an interesting position where, like, I think their facilities are nice enough and that they can take the next step under uh, Bobby Benson. Uh, yeah, I mean, you get you get Bobby Benson in the mix. Uh, what, what did Providence do? They had a nice little win last week, right? Against Holy Cross, they looked good. Um, and it's just like big win over Hokro. Like you're talking about, you're talking about a, a nice, a nice facility out of, like I think two of the most underrated lacrosse facilities in the country are Providence and Fairfield, um, and Providence can dump a ton into lacrosse. So like, I think with Bobby Benson, like they they could be a uh, a legitimate Big East contender. I think within the next couple of years, um, that's that's I guess my take, hot take. Maybe, like, maybe I think that's they, why, maybe, maybe say, that's why Tier, maybe that's why Tierney's on the way out. Maybe he sees the the writing on the walls. I this might be a hot take. I will say by the year 2026, if Bobby Benson doesn't leave, Providence will have won a Big East championship. Regular season. Down, mark it down, lock it up. Uh, and yeah. So get ready for a uh get ready for a great weekend of college lacrosse. Got a good slate of games gets going tonight. Uh good slate of games on Saturday. And just make sure you guys keep a lookout for Providence at some point over the next three years to keep Dukes to that one. Uh, and in the meantime, we'll be keeping it low to high until the day we die. We out.